It's the beginning of what came to be known as six hours in hell during the Vietnam War. Soldiers battle for their lives as the Viet Cong close in on all sides. The situation seems dire as three evac helicopters are forced to return to base without extracting the pinned down US soldiers. The battle rages on as bullets fly through the air, grenades explode left and right. Suddenly a man runs through the enemy lines and joins his squad. His name is Roy Benavides, and he's been shot and wounded, but he immediately starts repositioning the squad and preparing everyone for extraction. Benavides redistributes ammo, tends to the wounded, and battles alongside battered soldiers as they fight for their lives during the six hours in hell. At the end of the day, he's the only reason that most of the squad leaves the battlefield alive. Roy Benavidez grew up in Texas. His parents were of Mexican and Yaqui Indian ancestry. Sadly, they both died when he was a child. Roy and his siblings were adopted by his grandfather, uncle, and aunt. He tried hard in school but eventually dropped out at age 15 so that he could work and help provide for the family. He shined shoes, sold papers, and picked cotton, all to make ends meet and put food on the table. Benavides tried going back to school after working for some time, but he'd been out of the game for so long that it didn't work out. He decided the next best thing was to join the military. It was 1952 during the Korean War when he enlisted in the Texas Army National Guard. He found camaraderie and brotherhood in the military and joined the United States Army in 1955. Later, he said he'd earned his airborne wings because of the nice pay upgrade, but that's what you get when your specialty is jumping out of planes. Then Benavides made a decision that would change the trajectory of his life. Some of his friends were discussing joining the Army Special Forces. Benavides knew he had what it would take to join the elite ranks of the Green Berets and push himself to complete the training. He was put through physical and mentally strenuous tests that only the strongest willed soldiers could complete. He pushed himself and fought hard until he was part of the select few who could call themselves snake eaters. Benavidez had gone through a lot during his training and completed a number of missions for the army, but nothing could prepare him for what would happen next. While deployed in South Vietnam as an advisor to an infantry regiment, he stepped on a landmine during a patrol and was medevaced back to the United States. The doctors at Brook Army Medical Center told Benavidez he would never walk again. Roy Benavidez had never taken anything lying down and he wasn't about to let the doctors decide his fate. He was discharged from active duty, but nothing would stop him from doing his duty. Benavidez later recounted the events of how he would wait until all of the medical personnel would leave for the night and he would sneak out of his bed. He crawled to the wall in the far end of the room and gritted his teeth to keep from screaming due to the agonizing pain from his spinal injury. Once he reached the wall, he would push himself against it to a standing position. At first, he willed his brain just to wiggle his toes. Once that mission was accomplished, he started to move his foot ankle, and then leg, until Roy Benavidez, against all odds, walked out of the hospital. Yes, you heard that correctly, Roy Benavidez forced himself to learn to walk again after taking a direct hit from a landmine. No one could argue that Roy Benavidez was a man who would not give up. He had proved the doctors wrong and he knew he was needed back in Vietnam. He had a calling, and that calling was to be a soldier. Nothing was going to stop him, not even a landmine. He decided to go back to Vietnam in 1968. It was during this tour Benavides would save the lives of several men and come within inches of death himself. That day was May 2, 1968, and Roy Benavides, aka Tango Mike Mike, was assigned to the B-56 Special Forces Group in the Republic of Vietnam. That morning, a 12-man Special Forces team was sent to the jungle of Lok Ninh to confirm intelligence that an attack by enemy force was imminent. After their boots hit the ground, it was not long before they encountered enemy resistance. It would seem that the intel had been correct and a massive Vietnamese force was in the area. The squad radioed for immediate extraction. A three-helicopter extraction flight reached the area where the men were pinned down, but enemy fire prevented them from landing or extracting any of the soldiers. The helicopters returned to the base where Roy Benavides was monitoring the radios and offloaded their wounded. Benavides knew what he had to do to save the men. Over the radio, he had heard the cries for help and that the enemy force might be up to 1,000 men strong. Benavides did not hesitate. Roy Benavides grabbed a medical bag and slung it over his shoulder. He knew every second counted and so he sprinted to the next helicopter preparing for departure. He left his gun behind and was armed only with his knife. The helicopter lifted up into the air and flew to the aid of the men who were under attack. While hovering over the battlefield, Benavides spotted the pinned down squad. The men were in a circle fighting for their lives and defending themselves from the Viet Cong who surrounded them on all sides. Master Sergeant Benavides saw from the helicopter that his brothers in arms below were wounded and outnumbered. He directed the helicopter pilot to descend into a nearby clearing where he jumped from the hovering aircraft and ran toward the firefight. While running to support the US soldiers, Benavides was wounded by small arms fire in his leg, face, and head. 
He ignored the pain and dove into the area where the platoon were holding out from. Despite his injuries, Benavides took control and began giving repositioning orders to the men. They got into formation to allow for the landing of an evac helicopter that would extract them. Benavides grabbed an AK-47 off of one of the dead soldiers on the ground and started to redistribute the ammo and direct the fire of the squad. Once the remaining men in the platoon had their orders, Benavides began administering morphine to the men who had been wounded. He picked up his radio and, with his call sign of Tango Mike Mike, directed another chopper toward their location. Benavides had just called in air support when a bullet entered his thigh. Benavides had no time to be wounded or to think about his own needs. He was focused on one thing and one thing only. He needed to save his men. The evac helicopter had just landed and it was time to get out of Dodge. Benavides provided covering fire as the men ran to the helicopter. The sound of enemy fire ramped up as they tried to prevent the squad from boarding the chopper. Realizing that the success of the mission and the safety of the base was at stake due to classified documents on the platoon leader, Benavides ran back into the jungle to recover the body and documents. When he reached the body, a bullet entered his abdomen and shrapnel from a grenade pierced his back. As he lay on the ground for a moment, recovering from the impact of his wounds, Benavides looked up just in time to see the pilot of the helicopter mortally wounded by enemy fire. The helicopter spun out of control and crashed into an explosion of metal and flames. Benavides took a deep breath and continued his mission to recover the classified documents. He grabbed the papers and made his way back to the wreckage of the aircraft, where he aided the wounded men and dragged the disoriented survivors back into a defensive location. Once the squad was redeployed and engaged in combat again, Benavides took a moment to survey the area. He crammed the classified documents into his uniform right as an enemy bullet entered his stomach. Roy Benavides was now bleeding from wounds all over his body. He was going in and out of consciousness, but his training and dedication to his men carried him on. He moved around the perimeter of the defensive lines distributing water and ammunition to the men. He checked in with each soldier making sure to inspire and remind them what they were fighting for. Then like angels sent from the heaven, the airstrikes began. Benavides got on the radio and directed fire from supporting gunships to suppress the enemy. This allowed for another helicopter to land for extraction. Benavides began to carry wounded men to the new extraction helicopter. He made several runs and helped several battered men onto the chopper. As he carried and loaded the final man onto the aircraft, a Vietnamese soldier clubbed him from behind with the butt of his gun. Benavides fell face first onto the damp, mossy ground of the jungle floor. He rolled onto his back, just in time to see the light glare off the steel of a bayonet being thrust at him. He grabbed the bayonet with his hand, slicing his skin wide open. This deflected the bayonet away from his body but straight into his left arm. Benavidez quickly pulled out his knife and plunged it into his assailant's side, killing him. Benavidez rose from the ground, bleeding from over 30 wounds he received during the battle. Running purely on his will to do right and adrenaline, he destroyed the remaining classified documents, grabbed the last man, and boarded the helicopter. Due to his heroic actions, Master Sergeant Raul Paul Benavidez saved eight lives that day. His men hauled Benavidez into a helicopter. Once he was in, the chopper rose into the sky and flew away from the blood-soaked earth where the last six hours in hell had commenced. The soldiers in that chopper looked at their savior with admiration, but when they looked closer, they realized Benavidez was holding his own intestines in his hands. He passed out from exhaustion. Upon landing back at the base, the wounded men and recovered bodies were unloaded from the helicopter. While in the heat of the moment, Benavides had loaded three dead Viet Cong soldiers onto the aircraft. He was later asked why he had put the enemy soldiers onto the transport, to which he responded, I didn't want to leave anybody behind. My mission was to recover all classified documents, and if they had any papers on them, they got carried to the helicopter. As the bodies were being unloaded, Benavides was mistaken for a Viet Cong and thrown into a pile of enemy bodies because of his darker skin tone. With the numerous wounds and blood all over his body, the medics mistook him for dead and began to zip him up in a body bag. Benavides remembers thinking, oh god no, as the zipper approached the top of his body. He could not shout or even speak because when in battle with a Viet Cong soldier, his jaw had been dislocated. The dried blood from his wounds covered his eyes so that he couldn't even blink. Then he heard a voice. No, 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 that's Roy Benavides, one of the rescued soldiers said. The doctor leaned in to check if Benavides was still alive. Later Roy recounted that once he felt the doctor's hand on his chest, he made the best shot of his life. He spat in the doctor's face, to which the doctor replied, I think he'll make it. After a daring rescue mission in battle which came to be known as Six Hours in Hell, Benavidez had a total of 37 separate bayonet, bullet, and shrapnel wounds. He had saved a number of soldiers' lives and was given the Distinguished Service Cross. Yet he was not to be given the Medal of Honor for several years due to bureaucratic red tape. The board in charge of choosing a soldier to receive the Medal of Honor required that an eyewitness other than the soldier being recommended give a statement. 
At the time, it was thought that Master Sergeant Benavides was the only surviving member who was at the Battle of Six Hours in Hell. But in 1980, Brian O'Connor, a radio man who was part of the Special Forces team that Benavides rescued, provided a 10-page report on the engagement. Apparently, O'Connor had been so severely wounded that he was evacuated back to the United States before he had been fully debriefed. He was in Australia when he read in a newspaper about Benavides and the refusal of the US government to award him the Medal of Honor, all because of a technicality. O'Connor contacted the State Department and submitted a report confirming the accounts that had been previously presented by others. He then served as the eyewitness that the government required to award Benavides the Medal of Honor. Unfortunately, by the time all the paperwork was in order, the time limit for the medal had expired, but veterans, army officials, and politicians successfully appealed to Congress, and Roy Benavides was awarded the Medal of Honor for his heroism. On February 24, 1981, President Ronald Reagan presented Master Sergeant Raul Paul Benavides the Medal of Honor. The president supposedly turned to the press and the people gathered and said, if the story of his heroism were a movie script, you would not believe it. We just would like to add that we would definitely go see that movie. Roy Benavidez was a war hero. He saved the lives of men who would have been lost without his heroic actions. He survived and eventually walked away from a landmine blast that doctors said had crippled him forever. Then he went back to Vietnam and rescued US soldiers in the battle which came to be known as Six Hours in Hell. He put his own life on the line so that he could save his brothers who were pinned down by the Viet Cong. Roy Benavidez eventually was rightfully awarded the Medal of Honor for his bravery and has gone down in history as one of the bravest and most heroic soldiers of all time. Let us know in the comments on a scale from 1 to 10 how badass you think Roy Benavidez aka Tango Mike Mike was. The right answer is 11 just in case you were unsure. If you feel inspired by the heroics of Roy Benavidez, why not check out another incredible person in the video over here? Or maybe you'd be more interested in the video right next to it. Either way, you can be sure that your choice will provide you with some incredible information. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.